where we're working on two massive projects that definitely require a lot of capital to be deployed. First and foremost, the development of Vega C, which is our uh, smallest and new rocket, uh, which will fly first time in 2019. And then Ariane 6, which is the European heavy lifter, to which we also participate as a partner, and that will fly in 2020. These two very engaging projects require massive investment, both in terms of production capacity and new technology development. So certainly the additional resources will be very helpful in accelerating the time and the success of these uh, two engagements. You compete in quite a crowded market. You're up against the likes of uh, Elon Musk. What's, what's it like doing, uh, doing battle with him? Well, it is interesting and fascinating, and we admire the way he has actually brought some fresh air into the industry and quite some uh, entrepreneurial spirit, which I think the whole sector really needed. But we are a demonstration that, uh, of course, this new wind of entrepreneurship is actually hit in the sector because very much like Elon has put resources coming from an entrepreneur into this business, we have actually taken the capital markets to invest into a business of this kind. So I think it'll be challenging to compete with them. We are a much smaller company uh, and we operate in a niche market, but we are very excited to be in a new and very rapidly growing market. And what would you say are the main challenges facing the business at the moment? I think the main challenge of today is to be able to make uh, space uh, transportation more and more affordable uh, for everyone to be able to fly to space while keeping the same level of reliability that has always characterized also our products. This is a challenge because of course we need to develop more performing technologies at a much lower cost. And I think this is, by the way, uh, the main challenge facing the industry across the globe. So when do you think man travel into space is going to become commonplace? Well, I don't know. You know, this is actually one area in which we do not focus. We observe what is happening. We recognize that there is a growing interest uh, for this sector, uh, which is becoming uh, close to our reality, I would say, with the many initiatives that are happening, uh, particularly in the U.S. Uh, at the moment. Um, it is yet unclear when this will actually become a business that people will be willing to pay uh, to go to space and for doing what, which we don't know yet. Because space tourism in itself, it's not uh, easy to believe it will actually be a business. One thing it's being technically possible, one thing it's being a profitable business. And do you worry that the number of satellites being sent into space now is eventually going to become regulated because now so many people are sending satellites up? Well, on one side, we hope they will start to be regulated because for several decades, the story of uh, uh, space debris and, and, and uh, uh, the, the uh, crowded area in outer space has been uh, obviously a recurring theme of concern for the industry. Uh, so sooner or later, I think we'll start to deploy technologies that will be able to clean up all of this space debris and will probably become a business. So regulation may not necessarily be a negative factor.